Hi, Misha here. And at the time of this recording, it is July of 2019. And it was just over six years ago that we showed you this gun. In fact, exactly this gun on the channel. This is, of course, the Russian Molot Vepper. Some people call it Veeper. <laughs> 12. This is the FS, the side folding version. This is a 12 gauge semi automatic magazine fed shotgun based on the Kalashnikov pattern. It can handle both 2 and 3 quarter and 3 inch magnum rounds. And over the years, we've done multiple updates and revisits. For example, in 2014, we did a revisit video. We did one basically saying, hey, buy these because the price was good. We've also done kind of uh, hardware updates. For example, we did a short little video showing a 10 round mag when these came out. And we did a video in 2017, pretty side-by-side -side and at the range comparison with this gun's competitor, the Russian Izhmash Sega 12 LE shotgun, and kind of gave our thoughts as to which was the better gun. Well, it's been a while since we visited this, and it seemed like a good time now, because as you know, Two years ago, Molot guns joined the list of sanctions along with Ishmash. So these have not been allowed in the country for some time. And luckily, importers did stock up. However, finally those stocks are starting to run low. When these first came out, they were twelve, thirteen, even fourteen hundred dollars for the side folder. Then prices dropped, and then there was actually kind of a price war over two importers, and the price got down to $7.99, believe it or not. And that was for a folder. But then after the Izhmash sanctions, and then especially the Molot sanctions, prices have started to climb up again. We're getting to the point now where fixed stocked versions are... $1,000 plus, and folders are $1,200 plus, especially factory 922R type folders. Fime Group, the one who sells the military style Vepper 12, they, they took over the, the line some years ago, is claiming that they're running out and they're about to close out the part number for the Vepper 1203, which was the side folder. You know, take Fime, which is a sister company of KVAR and Arsenal, you know, with a little bit of a grain of salt. But I've never actually known them to outright lie. Sometimes they might exaggerate, but anyway. So if these are truly going to run out, I thought it'd be great to do a video talking about why Jan and I not only both own one of these, but have done so for over half a decade. So, why don't we... Well, I was going to say dust this off because it hasn't been out in a while, take it to the range and run some rounds through it, but the range was really dusty and covered in pollen, so I don't think it'll actually, it's probably dustier after being shot. But anyway, let's look at a few rounds and we'll come back to the table. November 12. More recoil than that 223. No. Pepper 12. And that's normally how this firearm behaves. That was with light loads from Walmart. I can't remember if they were Winchester or Federal, but typically it because it has a self-regulating gas system, it's pretty forgiving. It, it, it still prefers magnums, of course, but um, usually it'll cycle stuff. But once in a while you will have this happen. You had a stovepipe. Huh. Okay. That is 
value pack ammo. It is, yes. <laughs> You're good. There we go. Alright. So you'll get a light stove pipe where it's hanging out of the ejection port. All you have to do is just pull the bolt back slightly, tip the gun to the right, and it falls out. What that is, it has enough energy to extract, but sometimes there's not quite enough energy to fully throw the shell out. It'll even hit the ejector, but just not quite with enough force. So it's a, it's a light malfunction, and it really has to do with using lighter ammunition than these are intended for. There are a few remedies. If one thing, you'd just be like me and just put up with it happening once every couple hundred rounds. Or, you can make sure you kind of grease up the rails before shooting, which this one definitely wasn't because it's been sitting in the safe for a year unfired, so it's dry as a bone. Or you could do what Jay did. He bought a, a, a recoil spring, a lighter recoil spring, specifically intended for low brass two and three quarter type shells. And it's very, very easy to change out the spring. So it's an option. As you saw, I opened the stock for you. This is a nice, very solid tubular steel stock. And it locks extremely solid with no play. The cheek rest is made of rubber and can rotate. You have a very ergonomic pistol grip. You have a perfectly acceptable military type trigger. You have an extended AK safety on this side. It's also replicated on the other side. You have a pick rail on the top. It's made of polymer. It's hinged in the front so it holds reasonable zero. And to be fair, this is a shotgun, so you, you're not going to be shooting it, you know, 500 yards. It's plenty stable for a shotgun. You also have RPK style windage and elevation adjustable rear sights. They're paired with a RPK style kind of on a combo block front sight. The only downside to these iron sights is it's a very short sight radius, but then again it's a shotgun. You have a 1.5 millimeter RPK receiver with bulge trunnion. You have a magwell. It's made of polymer. They try to use polymer on this as much as they can to keep the weight reasonable because if it were all steel, it would be an extremely heavy gun. As it is, it's still noticeably heavier than a Sega 12. Of course, it has straight-in mag insertion, last round bolt hold open. It has a release. It has an automatic hold open button, I mean a manual hold open button here if you need it. So it's very functional, a very modern style of magwell. We have RPK handguards. We have a chrome lined barrel. Now originally in Russia, this was developed for military, police, and three gun competition shooting. Work began in the late 90s actually at the Izhmash factory and then the design was kind of transferred to Molot who tweaked it and made some major improvements and they introduced the Vepra 12 in 2003. For the Russian military and police, there are a couple of versions. Their versions almost always have the folding stock, but there is also an adjustable AR stock style. Receiver is pretty much the same. Quite a few of the military versions will have a quad rail handguard. Their standard full length has a 16.9, so essentially 17 inch barrel. But they do have a compact version, 12 inches. And they some of theirs are safe semi, and some are safe semi full auto. These are threaded the same on the muzzle as the Sega 12, so any Sega 12 devices will fit. This is the basic kind of birdcage flash hider. It's also chrome lined. For the U.S. market, of course, 17, 17 inches for a shotgun is too short. So they do an 18 and a half to 19 inch barrel, depending on which source you read. I've never measured mine. So it's a little bit longer than the minimum here. 
In Russia, they also do a 20 inch and even a 26 inch for certain markets like the UK. I think it looks longer than it is because of, you know, how much it sticks out. But even on the military ones, it's still going to come out to here. It does use a long stroke gas piston like any Kalashnikov, but it has an additional part up here called a puck. It's part of the self regulating gas system. It has ambi sling swivels. It has a somewhat AK style bolt. It's a kind of a two piece with a head that stays in the same orientation and then the lugs will rotate behind it. Pretty unique. And it does have a spring loaded takedown button like you find on some newer AK-74Ms. It's a very modern, very thoughtful design. Standard magazine cap in Russia is 8 rounds. Reasonably long, about like a 40 round, maybe a slightly shorter RPK mag. That's why I actually keep my mags in an RPK pouch. They also do do a 10 round extended mag, but as you see, it is very long. That much longer for two rounds. It's up to you if it's worth it. And for the US market, they do a compact five round mag. So it's legal for import, but the guns can accept eights and tens without mods. There's no, there's no rules against that. I can almost insert this one-handed. They go on very easy because they're straight in. See, sorry about that. Sorry for jostling you guys. So five, eight, and ten are the standard caps for Russian mags. These are very high quality. They're made of a modern reinforced fiberglass. They also have steel locking tabs and feed lips. They do cost, but they are cheaper than Sega mags, and I advise you to get these. I've had a lot of people buy the US copies, and while they're not absolute junk, they just don't offer the same reliability, durability, and honestly looks as the originals. US mags can be had in 10, even 12 rounds, which are very long. And drums are even made, but I really don't recommend the drums for multiple reasons. Well, let's run a couple more rounds through this and then come back for final thoughts. Yep. Last three rounds was better. Oboe decided to join us. <laughs> she doesn't like the spotlight. She also doesn't like being locked out of the room as I'm doing videos. <laughs> but yeah, this is a very fun shotgun. In fact, Jay commented on that. He hadn't shot his in a while either. And he said he just kind of forgot how fun they are. They have enough recoil to know you're firing a real gun but they're actually very soft shooting thanks to the gas system and having a lot of weight and a recoil pad I have mine set up very basic I like the birdcage flash hider this is an original Russian I believe this came from Legion USA I like using it because it keeps it relatively short and it's the lightest flash hider a lot of the big breaks and stuff add a lot of length and honestly a real lot of weight to the end of your barrel. Um, I have no reason for rails. Yes, Hobo. She's rubbing my leg. Up here. So why would I add more weight and bulk? I find these perfectly comfortable handguards. Same goes for the ergonomic pistol grip. It is perfectly fine and comfortable. I don't need a scope or sight. And with this folding stock, while it's a very good folding stock, you're pretty much committed to it. It's not really interchangeable, not without quite a bit of work or custom parts. So that's why mine has stayed 
kind of more or less a standard Vepper 12 all these years. So anyway, if you have one, I hope you enjoyed this kind of revisit. So these are always fun to take out. And if you've been on the fence about getting one, and are a shotgun or AK fan, I strongly encourage you to make it a priority this year before they dry up on the primary market. Will these be gettable in the future? Hell yeah, they imported thousands of these, which was good. But the price will only go up over the years. I don't think these will ever be two, three thousand dollar guns, at least not within the immediate future, just because of so many came in. But definitely the days of sub thousand dollar Vepper 12s are over. And for what you get, it's it's a good package. The, the nice thing about the Vepper 12, if you buy a Sega 12, you end up having to modify it to make it all that it can be. The Vepper 12 is just good to go out of the box. You can get a fixed stock version, which has a standard rear trunnion, so you can add, install any standard AKM, AK-74 stock. It takes standard AK pistol grips and comes with a perfectly good one. Like I said, it already has your magwell, which is one of the biggest expenses for a Sega 12. The trigger it comes with is is fine. Honestly, for a shotgun, it's it's really a good trigger. The handguards are basic, and if you need rails, you can always add them, but I don't know. Your choice. And these usually just come with a basic muzzle nut on the barrel, so you can just unscrew it and put on whatever you desire. And they also do not come with a sling, but it just takes a standard AK sling. This is a Bulgarian. Magazines are still available for a reasonable sum right now, too. $100 or less. They've always been cheaper than Sega 12 mags. Even before the sanctions, Sega 12 mags were $100 or more. So, I think the Vepper 12 is a better value. I like the Sega 12, but it's actually cheaper when you figure it's good to go out of the box, and then its mags are cheaper. And it seems to be a little more reliable with lower power ammo than the Sega 12. Kind of anecdotal evidence there, but we've been shooting both for quite a long time, and that's just more or less our experience. So anyway, just an informal look on a Saturday in July. We'd love to hear about your own Vepers or how you've config configured them. And uh, we wish we could have see more Molots or Ishmash products in the U.S. But guys, it ain't happening. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm telling you though, that, that sanction isn't going to be lifted anytime soon. And even if it were... What importer is going to pick up these product lines knowing what a hot potato they are? Even if someone did that, so we're on the third even now, it takes time to make things like this come around, you know, six months, a year, even more. So, yeah. These are gone for the foreseeable future. And maybe very possibly forever. After all, the Chinese sanction has been in place for over 25 years. And no one's talking about lifting it. So, just looking at you know, history, it just seems like once they sanction something, it's effectively banned forever. So yeah, we just thought we would do a retrospective on the Vepper 12. This is Misha, and uh, Jay's nearby, so we both appreciate you tuning in. If you could, like, share, subscribe, and also check out the link to our Patreon page. Well, I'm going to get off here and start dusting my gun. Catch you very soon next time.